Maggie. I was not. Yes, you were. It was only an old gypsy woman, Maggie, dear. But she smiled at me as if she knew me. How could she know you, silly? I didn't say she did. I said she looked as if she did. <laughs> she waved, too. I don't like those woods. It's called Red Deeps, where the gypsy woman was. But it's so green. And there's an old quarry somewhere in the forest. The stone is red. Not red like blood. More the colour of Bob Jakin's hair. Oh, Bob Jakin, he steals things and throws stones at sheep. He's wicked. So are you, Maggie Tulliver. You let me rabbits die. Oh, Maggie, you didn't. Yes, you did. I didn't mean to. I just forgot about him. Lucy wouldn't forget, would you? I wish Lucy was my sister, not you. Oh, Tom, dear, don't be so unkind to Maggie. She looks so ugly with all her hair chopped off. <laughs> and that stupid bonnet. Don't <laughs> laugh at me, Tom. You're cruel and wicked. Miss Spitfire, listen to her. Hush. I think I hear Aunt Pullet coming. Why is everything so covered over in Aunt Pullet's house? Perhaps the furniture died. Oh, Tom, don't. It's so gloomy in here. Aunt Pullet don't like dust on anything. Sometimes she puts sheets on the carpets, too. Once I had to wear towels around my shoes to keep the carpets clean. It's funeral shrouds. Tom! I declare, Sophie, you must measure a yard and a half across in those sleeves. However, do you fit through a carriage doorway? Upon my soul, Bessie, you do well to keep that child in her bonnet. Whatever, did you have her hair cut? She looks a perfect fright. The naughty girl did it herself, sister. Herself? I never heard of such scandalous behaviour. I trust you were severely punished. The hairdresser at St. Dogs was quite disgusted. Your pagodas are always so beautiful, Tom. I can't seem to make any of my cards stand up together. I'll show you, Lucy. Oh, no, you shan't, Miss Clumsy. Oh, come on. You're so just a nincompoop with cards. Let's... I'm not. Look. There. What do you think of it, sister? Well, it's very... It's very black, sister. Don't be obtuse, Bessie. You know very well that I'm in mourning for Mrs. Sullivan next door. Oh, yes, of course. Well, it's really very nice. Very expensive, I'd say. I've sometimes thought that there's a loop too much ribbon this side. If you meddle with it, Sophie, you might repent. Mm, that's true. How much were you charged? Pollock paid for it. He said I was to have the best bonnet in Garham Church. This dress is new as well. Very nice. Oh, oh Maggie, do look out. Oh, my kid. Now see what you've done, stupid. I'm not stupid. It was your fault. Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Polly. It was an accident. No, it weren't. You did it on purpose. You're too rough, miss. Just look at my carpet all over cream. Why can't you sit still, Maggie? I don't like this fuck. It's too tight and it smells nasty. Little girls who answer back mustn't have cowslip wine. She looks like an old Judy. Tom, that certainly is a remarkable bonnet, Bessie. It has the general appearance of sage cheese garnished with lettuce. The little wretch jumped on it. Oh, it's a sin and a shame to buy you anything, Maggie Tulliver. You're a naughty, awkward child. Sister, I foresee nothing but misbehaviour while the children remain indoors. Might they play outside? Very well. You will not run after the peacock again, Tom. No, Aunt Pullet. Lucy, dear, be mindful of the mud. Yes, I'll put it. You shall not go off the paved walks in the farm, Maggie. And if you wish to see the poultry fed, please stand... Well, that girl, Bessie, is too rude and too brown. Oh, she only seems brown, sister, when she's with her cousin. It's not good for Lucy's health to be so pale. It's not good for Maggie's health to be so brown. Tulliver says there's red wheat as well as white, and some like the dark grain best. I'm sorry for you, Bessie. 
Both your children are as contrary as their father. Sophie, dear, it does so weigh on my mind. I must tell you what happened between Tulliver and Jane on Thursday. Trouble, no doubt. They had a quarrel. Oh, Jane's temper is beyond anything. Yes, I'll spare you every detail of what passed between them, sister. You'll spare me nothing, sister. Tell me precisely what was said. It pains me to see you carry on this way of a neighbour, Tulliver Jane. I'd have hoped by now your anger would have died down enough for you to see just how stupid you'd been. I've been? Calling in that money when you don't need to and causing all this bitter feeling in the family over a stupid little tiff. Sometimes I don't understand you at all, Mrs. G. You never spoke a true word, Mr. Clegg. There's not one member of your family who understands anybody but himself. And very boring that must be, there being so little to understand. You'd best leave finding fault with my kin until you've left off quarrelling with your own. I've never quarrelled with my kin. Ah, never quarrel? What do you call Thursday, pray? Leaving your sister's husband's in a tantrum? I've no quarrel with Bessie. It was Mr. Tulliver drove me out of the house and he's none of my blood. A woman with everything provided for her, as much money as she asks for, and a gig newly stuffed and lined at no end of expense, going on this way of a poor relations. I say, Jane, you're biting and snapping at the Tullivers like a mad dog. I'm not asking you to fall down on your knees to Tulliver. Just behave civil to him, that's all. Don't bear malice. You'll please to order what you like for dinner, Mr. Glegg. I shall have gruel. Upstairs. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Jane will be the first of our family in the madhouse. You mark my words. Yes. Goodness gracious. I'm five minutes late. A pink pill. I should have had it five minutes ago. You made me forget with your talking. I declare, Sophie, there can't be another patient such as you in the parish. I've no call to be ashamed. What are doctors for if not to be called in? It's flying in the face of providence for people to meddle with their own insides. I doubt if there's anyone but Dr Turnbull as your experience in medical matters. Oh. And the expense of it, Bessie. With drafts at 18 pence apiece. Just look at them all. The strong stuff in small bottles, weak stuff in large bottles. And Pullet keeps them all. Hmm? The bottles. He keeps every one. They fill two shelves in the storeroom already. Whatever for? Well, he says it's only right that folks should see them after I've gone. Oh, don't talk of going, Sophie, dear. Who else would I have to stand between me and Sister Glegg? Sister Dean's never on my side. Oh, Sister Dean was always contrary. She will have striped things in her house, and I only like spots. We've always hung together on that, Bessie. Stripes and spots. <laughs> in the mud. No, silly. Looking for things to eat. But how can they breathe with their noses in the mud? <laughs> oh, Tom, look at that one over there. Look, look. Oh. <laughs> oh, go away, Maggie. Nobody asked you to come. I want to see the pigs too. Well, you can't, because I'm showing Lucy. I shall. Go away. Hey, Maggie. Sophie, what am I to do? Sister Glegg leaving the house that way just so weigh on my mind. Well, your husband should be ashamed of himself for speaking so rashly. Well, I know he's hasty, but what can I do? He's not a man to be dictated to, especially not by Jane. A bit better if Jane had go to the doctor sometimes instead of chewing turkey rhubarb whenever anything's the matter with her. Do go and see her, Sophie, dear. Persuade her to make it up with Tulliver. Well, the right thing would be for Tulliver to go himself. If he's borrowed money from her, he shouldn't be above that. If I were to go down on my bare knees, he'd never humble himself to do that. You surely don't expect Jane to apologise. It's just that Tulliver owes her £500. And if she decided to call the money in now, we might have to mortgage the mill. Well, if he's nervous about his money, let him call him what his own sister owes him. Didn't you tell me that she and all her own children depended on him? Tulliver's ridden over to see Farmer Moss today, but even with that loan returned, there's still £200 to find. Tulliver's too given to go into law, Bessie. 
He makes away with his money on silly legal disputes. Won't you please help, sister dear? Please, Sophie. Well, well, I can't stand by and see you ruined. I'll drive to see Jane tomorrow, if you wish. Oh, thank you, sister. Well, come in, Sally. You can clear away the... Tom, what's the matter? If you please, Aunt Pullet. It's Lucy. Lord, have mercy. Where is not... the child? Here. <laughs> Maggie pushed her mother. It's all her fault. Oh, Bessie. I feel faint. Oh, sit down, oh, sister. Do oh, oh, keep her in the doorway, yes, Bessie. Yes. Don't let her come under the carpet. Whatever oh. you do. Where's Maggie, Tom? Oh, she ran away. She said she'd never be back. Oh, you're a naughty boy to take the girls where there's dirt. You know that Maggie will get into mischief if there's mischief stop, to be done. Stop! Stop! Oh, it's too great a weight to be sustained by a single man. Uh, now don't cry, dear. We'll soon have you clean again. Where did Maggie run, Tom? Has she gone home? No, mother. She ran towards the river, I believe. Maggie's father. Lizzie, move your dolly. Sit down, brother, with some good ale. I'll not be staying, Gritty. Will your husband be long? Is this to do with money? No, it is. I see. Well, you've got enough girls, Gritty. Four of them, bless their hearts. And each we a brother apiece. Well, I hope they grow up to fend for themselves and not go hanging on their brothers in later life. My boys will always be good to their sisters. What has you been to me? Oh, I did what I could for tea. I wish you'd bring Maggie one day. All my little ones love to see her. I know she likes to come and play here. Yeah? She's fonder of you than all her other aunts. No mistake. Yeah, can blame her. <laughs> she can mucky her shoes here and dare a frock without fear of a slap. Who'd notice mucky shoes in all this muddle? Maggie's like you used to be, Gritty. No. I was never so quick and clever as Maggie. She's sharp, brother, mark my words. Mm. A loving child, but sharp. Oh, well, there's not many a praise for the little wench. Not well, in my mind, she's got more fire than the boy. It's about Tom I'm here to see you. What a while you've been, Mr. Moss. Why, well, I did call it a run all the way. Uh, sit down, Mr. Tulliver, sit no, down. No, I'll not sit. It's business talk I've come for. I'll leave you. No, no, you stay. About Tom, did you say? I see you've got wheat again in the corner clothes. Right. It's poor looking stuff, Moss. Never a bit of dressing on it. I warned you. Poor farmers like me must do as they can. Farmers only get out of the ground what they put into it. Aye, farmers with money to play with, do. Well, I'd say men who borrowed money without paying interest would have money to play with. Wouldn't you? So that's how it is. Aye. I must have the money, Moss. All of it? Aye. We'll be ruined, brother. Uh, and I should be ruined if I don't have it. So you must look about and see how best you can repay me my 300. Look, I know I'm behind with the interest, but I was unlucky with the wool last year. And what with the missus being laid up again and all, things have gone more awkward than usual. There's some folks things will always go awkward for. I don't know what fault you've got to find in me, Mr. Tulliver. I've done my best. An empty sack will never stand upright. You're unfair, brother. There's not a day labourer works harder than Moss. And what's the good of that? He'd no capital to put into this farm with the bit of money I gave you when you got married. You should never have got married, Gritty. I was a it from the start. Now look at you. You've crowned your mistake with eight bobbies. I'm sorry, sister. I have to do this. I must look to my own business and my own family. I can't be expected to provide money for everybody else as well as myself. What is this to do with Tom, brother? Tom is to leave the academy and go to a new school at a hundred guineas a year. And on top of that, I've quarrelled with Mrs. Glegg and must pay her back the 500 pounds I owe her. But we'd have to sell up and leave our home in yeah. order to pay you back. And I'd lose my house. I've got to mortgage the mill to pay the lawyers. I didn't know. No, not even Bessie knows. But if I don't have the money I lent Moss, I can't meet the half yearly payment. We'll have to part with every other stock we've got. We'll be ruined. Well, you must do the best you can. That's the best. 
I'm sorry. I hope your Tom will never be so hard on his sister. Good day, good day. It's gone. Back to the field. I came back to tell you not to fret, good dear. It came into my mind as I rode home that if I would hard on my only sister, it might tend somehow to make Tom hard on Maggie one day. I'll not be around her to take a little when she's part. So to fret to you. Get back with the money you owe me. Just must be as clever and contriving as he can, and perhaps things will look brighter for you next year. A mill, brother. Your mortgage payments. Ah, that's a puzzle, isn't it? But it's my puzzle, not yours. You've your own folk and home to look to. You're a good, kind man. Well, always be a good brother, Critain. Remember that. Yeah. Finish your washing, woman. You'll have no sun left to dry it by. <laughs> well, sister. This little lady's come to stay with us. Haven't you, my dear? Yes, please. Has she got a copper for a poor sick man, then? You can have it if you like. I'd rather wear a red handkerchief like a proper gypsy. I will. You come and sit down over here, my pretty. That's it. in the property and you might be glad to choose another if I was queen I'd be nice to everybody and give them proper beds so you've come to stay with us have you my pretty I've run away you see because I'm unhappy I I've come to live with you and teach you things oh, there's a clever little lady you can see. I came away in a hurry so I haven't got my books with me. But I can tell you about drug if you like. Did you ever hear about Columbus? Is that where you live? Oh, no. Columbus is a man. Hmm. He found half the world. But they treated him very badly and put chains on him. Come here. Perhaps it's too long to tell you before tea. Oh, she's hungry, poor little lady. I'll find her something to eat, Mother. A little bread and trick would be nice, thank you. <coughs> and some tea. Oh, 
And where's your own little lady? My father's Mr. Tulliver. But we mustn't let him know where I am. Or he'll come and fetch me. I live in Dolcote Mill. A big mill, is it, my dear? A little way this side of St. Ogg's. That's it. Hmm. Nice bit of little for you, my dear. Have you any treacle, please? Hmm? No, treacle. No! You're no, a fool! Are you going to murder me? Are you going to murder me? Perhaps you could do it outside. Oh, cheerful to be murdered outside. You'll be sure and say we've been good to your mind and brought you home all safe and sound. You're hurting me out. You'll be sure and say that. Yes, yes, I promise. Uh -huh. What's this then? What's this? What's going on, Maggie? You're supposed to meet your Aunt Pullets. Where's your mother and Tom? The little miss lost herself in forest, I reckon. Is that so, Maggie? She was bringing me home, Father. Uh, and a good way it's been after being in Aunt Tramp all day. Would you run a lucky fortune to it? I've got the skill. Oh, thank you, old woman. You've rendered me enough service bringing me a little wench back. I'll do without your prophecies and palm reading. Ah. Goodbye, little lady. Now then, miss. Just tell me how you came to be rambling through the forest on your own and losing yourself. I went away, father. From your aunt Pullet? From Tom. He was so angry. I pushed poor Lucy in the mud and Tom hit me. And all the ants say I'm brown like a gypsy. So I ran away to be with them. Now listen, Maggie dear. You must promise me you'll never run away again. What would a father do without his little wench, eh? I promise, Father. <laughs> I'll then, never, never leave her again. That's my little wench. Aye. It is well you don't know what's in store for the little miss. It'd rob you of your sleep. <laughs> 